3 News Now this week. And this is just where we are. We don't want to be here, but it is where we are. And as responsible stewards of 54,000 children and almost 9,000 staff, this is this is where this is this was a decision that needed to be made. Dr. Logan says a variety of factors pushed her to the decision. She pointed to rising case numbers in Douglas County, concerned parents reaching out, and more and more staff members contracting the virus. We have seen critical numbers of staff have to either quarantine or have to be tested for COVID. This allowed us to make a reasonable prediction about what school would be like when we added 54,000 students to that mix. So what does this mean for students? School now will start on August 18th instead of the 13th that was previously planned. We'll have to go four to five hours of live or on demand learning with all of this going to at least the end of the first quarter, which ends October 16th. The goal is to have our, all of our technology distributed prior to the 18th, so we will be doing it uh, next week. The decision comes as the Omaha City Council is looking at a mask mandate. Councilmember Ben Gray says this strengthens the argument for a mandate. These are difficult decisions that have to be made, but they're decisions that we have to make if we're going to continue the viability of our city. Right now, the rest of the metro schools are planning to have kids in the classroom to some extent. President of the Douglas County Board of Health, Chris Rogers, says OPS's decision could have a ripple effect in the community. I would just say watching what happens after this announcement. I believe there are going to be some dominoes that fall. I believe there are going to be some changes. She's really going to be let down. She was excited to be, to be going back. So. Chris Hobby is not looking forward to breaking the news to his daughter, who attends Burke High School, that she'll start the school year remotely due to the pandemic. It's been a hard year. It's been a hard year for all of us for that. Javi doesn't agree with OPS's decision. He's concerned about the long-term impact it might have on his daughter's grades. She's she's a great student. I mean, she was she was uh, A's across the board, and uh, I know that she's going to suffer. You know, the the grades will suffer for this. You're dealing with behavioral, developmental, physical, cognitive, all kinds of needs that are being left unaddressed. That this remote virtual. Um, turn that the schools are making is not addressing. Liz Shields and TJ Hal have a special needs son at JP Lord School. They say he cannot learn remotely and are confused by OPS's decision. We have Lincoln opening up, so that means Lincoln kids with needs are getting services and my kid in Omaha is not, and there shouldn't be that type of inconsistency within an hour radius. However, other parents are in favor of the change. Concerned about the hybrid model and having the teachers do double the workload. To me, it felt like they had to do in-class teaching plus prepare some remote learning plans. Carissa Velasic has a child at Davis Middle School. She had issues with some kids being at home while some kids were in school and what that meant for teachers. She also has worries of COVID-19 spreading and other parents feel the same way. In a written statement, Rebecca Heeman, whose children attend Springville Elementary said, I'm grateful Dr. Logan and the OPS board have made the decision to move to the full remote model. I know this has been a difficult decision and will present challenges, but I believe it's the right choice to keep our students, teachers, and community safe. As for Javi, he hopes to see his daughter That's back nice. in school I soon. We need to start somewhere. You know, we got to start learning at some point. We got to take the first step doing it this way. Right now, we're just sort of staying in place, waiting for the storm to blow over, and it's not. Well, Papillion La Vista Community Schools also held their last school board meeting tonight before their first day of school, which is tomorrow. Reporter Ruta Olsenaita continues our team coverage tonight. Good evening, Papillion La Vista school board members got together one last time to discuss reopening plans, but not without some pushback from the teachers union. At the last school board meeting before school starts, Papillion La Vista educators with the teachers union stood right outside district offices and demanded schools not to reopen at 100% capacity. A survey conducted independently by the PLCS teachers union said that 70% of them were not comfortable returning to schools. Although their voices were heard by Superintendent Dr. Rickley. I think it shows our community, it shows this school district, it shows this board how passionate our teachers are and they care about kids. Uh, they're worried, we're all worried. The board has decided to continue on with the 100% capacity return plan. You may not always agree with the decisions we made, 
but they will always be grounded in science, they will always be grounded in thoughtful deliberation, and we will always do what we think in our heart is very best for our kids, our staff, and our community. Parents and teachers at the podium stated they're just not comfortable returning with everyone in the buildings. Allowing students to come back at 100% is in no way being a responsible citizen or keeping our students safe. Especially after seeing districts like Omaha Public Schools move to fully remote. Contrary to how some people believe, there's not an invisible barrier separating Douglas and Serpy counties. No board members oppose the decision, finalizing the reopening plans for Tuesday. Tuesday will be a half day and Wednesday will be the first full day. The students that signed up for the fully remote learning option, that's 10% of the student body, will begin school next week. Reporting in Papillion, Rudolf Sinaida, 3 News Now. And turning to our coronavirus coverage now, two metro area schools are now dealing with cases of COVID-19. Millard Public Schools has reported two positive cases at Reagan Elementary School. The school has not said whether they are students or teachers, but those who had direct contact with them have been asked to self-quarantine. The district said the school would be cleaned and sanitized this evening. Now tonight we also learned about a confirmed coronavirus case at a Roston school that's at Bloomfield Elementary. Now according to a note the school district sent to families, someone connected to a pre-kindergarten classroom at the school has the virus. Roston School District said the person was at the school during Red Square Day but was not present for Blue Triangle Day. School officials have been in contact with families who may have been exposed and were asked to quarantine. The Douglas County Health Department and the school district are investigating. I think it's a little heavy handed for the, you know, them to say, hey, you have to. Because right. well, I have a hard time breathing with it all. Really? I, I have yeah. asthma and I have a hard time breathing yeah, It's been nearly breathing. six months into a global pandemic and the debate over wearing a mask continues in Omaha. I think it's a little overblown. I think uh, that people should have the freedom to wear them if they wish. Wearing a mask isn't restricting your freedom. It's not restricting your American rights. It's helping to reduce the, the spread of the virus. It's in fact, it, the only thing it's restricting is the spread of COVID. Don Arendt and Alexandria Schmidt, both Omaha residents, have opposing views on how the city council should vote in implementing an emergency mask mandate. If the ordinance passes on Tuesday, all people five years or older would have to wear a face covering while indoors, and this includes places like educational institutions. It'll curtail me going out a little bit because when I, when I wear a mask, I can't wait to get out of a place because I, I, have a, you know, I have a difficult time breathing with a mask. Like Dawn, Alexandria says she also struggles to breathe in masks, but wears one anyway because of family members with compromised health. She will also be a senior this upcoming school year and hopes wearing a mask will allow some form of normalcy in her final year. I mean, I wanted to see my friends. I mean, who doesn't? But this is for our safety. It's we need we need a mask mandate, I think. And a lot of other big cities recognize that. And it's kind of sad that we're one of the few who don't. Councilman Pete Festerson tweeted they had five votes confirmed for the mask mandate and only needed one more to enact the emergency ordinance. That being said, here in Old Market, this vote seems to be 50-50. Maybe if we just all wore masks together to be a team, we wouldn't have many people dying like we have now. It's just hard to disseminate what is correct information. There's so much information out there that uh, it, you just get a lot of different sides and you're not sure which one to trust. If the emergency mask ordinance isn't approved, a regular mask mandate could be approved on August 25th if it gets just four votes in the city council. We don't leave the house without them. We don't go to the store without them. And it's real scary to be eating um, even at an outside restaurant with people that don't have masks. In Omaha, Kent Lutzen, 3 News Now. I, do please do not touch me and do not touch my stuff. It was a heated and lengthy discussion, some even being asked to leave the city chambers. Every single one of you are on notice. You are violating our unalienable rights. After hours of back and forth, the city council voted 7-0 to zero to issue an emergency mask ordinance to slow the spread of COVID-19 in Omaha. But as Councilwoman Amy Melton says, this decision did not come without pressure. We were told that OPS would not open without the mandate. We were rather shocked to see that they were going remote on Friday. 
The ordinance goes into effect immediately, meaning residents older than five years of age will now have to wear masks inside public spaces like schools and businesses until September 15th. For not wearing a mask, you will be cited $25 down from the $100 in the original ordinance that was amended by City Council. There are some exceptions as well. Mask use is not mandatory for those with a disability or medical condition. Masks aren't required when eating and drinking in restaurants, working out in a gym, and visiting government offices. But even with the infectious disease doctor's expertise and amendments to this ordinance, the debate on this pandemic and masks continues. What would Jesus do? And I believe in this time he would tell us, do not be afraid and love thy neighbor. Now, may I just say this is the quintessential time to show our brothers and sisters in Christ that we love one another by wearing these masks. You know, this mask thing is, is not a good thing, and I don't think we need a mandate. Real leadership would be an invitation to let's make Mer America great again. In Omaha, Kent Lutzen, 3 News Now. We begin with breaking news tonight. Four teens were involved in a bad crash in a Chaco Hills Park. Several of them were taken to the hospital. Good evening, MIS Times. Jennifer Griswold has the night off. Reporter Kent Lutzen is live at the scene with more on what we know about those involved and their injuries. Kent? Yeah, that's right, Maya. Four 16-year-olds were driving in their Chevy pickup truck and crashed right here in front of this tree in the Chalco Hills area. Now, according to the Sarpy County Sheriff's Office, two of those individuals received life-threatening injuries. One has minor injuries, and the other was treated right here on scene. And here's some information that we know right now. Now, one of those individuals, one of these teens, was taken by LifeNet and two others left in an ambulance to Bergen Mercy. Now, of the four teens, three were male, one were female. Now, Sarpy County Sheriff's Officer is investigating this scene, and they did not release any more details surrounding how this crash occurred. What we do know, alcohol speed and worn seatbelts are still also under investigation. Now, Gretna Fire, Omaha Fire, Sarpy County Sheriff's Office, and LifeNet responded to the scene tonight. Now, the Chevy pickup truck was just towed away just moments ago, and this scene really has cleared out here in the Chalco Hills area, and we hope to hear more from the Sarpy County Sheriff's Office in the morning or sometime soon. Stay connected at 3newsnow.com.